Welcome to Pull Back. I'm Kyla Hewson, and I'm here with Kristen Pugh. Hello. We know that trying to be a good person can be overwhelming in our complex global marketplace. So in this podcast, we try to make it a little bit easier by looking at the details behind consumer movements, product labels, and ethical lifestyles. Each episode, we are going to challenge ourselves to try something new in ethical consumption, and then we're going to tell you what we learned. Fuck ups and all. Fuck ups mostly in this one, I think. What do you think, Kristen? (laughs) (laughs) So many fuck ups. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like this. So with this episode, maybe I'll just get right into it. We're going to be doing a teeth centric sort of theme. Yes. I, for listeners at home, Kristen just bared her teeth at me threateningly. <laughs> <laughs> I really understand the audio format. <laughs> <laughs> so I think usually Kristen does most of the research. She is the academic uh, with a, you're about to get your PhD. We're going to be saying that for a little while, but. At some point in the future. Yeah. 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 The funny thing about PhDs is that they don't really have like a date, do they? Like, not like I'm graduating. Yeah. I mean, you do eventually graduate one hopes anyway. (laughs) Yeah. It's not like a, this is a two year program or this is a four year program. It's just as long as it takes. Yeah, so so Kristen is our academic thousand yard stare, and I am <laughs> I am the layman who she gets to explain stuff to. So uh, I'm the comic relief, I think. Although Kristen is very funny, so I don't even know what she needs me for. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you try more interesting things than me, so your challenges are always much better. I don't know what order episodes are coming out, <laughs> in, but this is only the second one we've ever recorded. So Kristen is really setting a bar for me on this. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I personally found coming up with a challenge a little tricky on this one. Me too, yeah. I did come up with a little blurb for the beginning that I could maybe say. Yeah, please, yeah. This was basically just stolen from the original skeletal blog post that I had started, but for this episode we're going to be looking at ethical teeth. So, one of the earliest lessons that we learn in life is how to brush our teeth. Uh, we learn, learn that from a very young age, and we spend about uh, 1,460 minutes every year meticulously scrubbing our pearly whites. So, If you're good at brushing your teeth, I don't know if I spend that much time. <laughs> I'm good at brushing my teeth, yeah. Given how much time is going into our dental hygiene, can we calibrate our daily habit to match our values? So looking at all the things that we use for teeth cleaning, basically, on a daily basis or weekly basis, depending on the product. Yeah, which was a little bit broad, frankly. Um, (laughs) You know, at first we thought, oh, this will be short. But then I think we both found that, frankly, we could have done a whole episode just on toothpaste, let alone. Yes. I looked at mouthwash, floss, toothpaste, and toothbrushes. I'm not sure what you looked at. That's perfect. Those are exactly the products (laughs) I looked at. Yes. Crushing it. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) So I think we'll start with our challenges this week. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So today, folks, for my ethical challenge, literally this morning, I put some baking soda in water. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's more or less what it amounted to. I use a mouth guard at night because I grind my teeth because I'm a highly stressed person. And so (laughs) maybe that PhD has something to do with that. (laughs) Yeah. So I have been using mouthwash to just clean the mouth guard every night, basically. And uh, I thought, well, that's a lot of Listerine that I'm using and a lot of like plastic bottles that I have to replace and that probably aren't really getting recycled, especially the caps. They definitely can't be. Basically, every month or so, I'm using this plastic bottle and also Listerines made by Johnson & Johnson. And not only do they test on animals, but also, as we found out recently, um, in September, they are a big part of the opioid epidemic, so I'm not sure I want to be supporting them. And also, I'm trying to move towards waste-free as much as I can, and having to replace a bottle of things is not great. So the first option that I tried was buying mouthwash tablets. Uh, So I bought a set of mouthwash tablets from Georganics is the company, and I purchased it through a waste-free shop online, actually. It's a 
Well, it's a physical store called Package Free Shop, but they also, like, you can buy online from them. And it's really nice. You When you purchase products from them, you get it in a recyclable cardboard box, which is actually the cardboard box from this order is what I use to hold my microphone when we are not recording. So it's kind of <laughs> nice. But then they don't put any any packaging that – it's minimal packaging, and all of the packaging that they do have is stuff that you can recycle. So that's nice. I ordered a set of mouthwash tablets from Georganics. Um, it came out to $19 Canadian. If you're American, it's only $14 because... Reasons. <laughs> yeah. You can also um, buy it for only eight pounds if you live in the UK. So just really being Canadian is the worst. But <laughs> such as Well, like, I don't know. What's the exchange rate right now? Oh, actually, I think the exchange rate is pretty bad for the UK right now. No, I think it's mainly just that the exchange rate, our dollar has no value. But that's okay. Anyway, um, so... With that purchase, whatever prices um, there are for you in your country, um, that ended up being 180 tablets. So if you're using it every day, it lasts you about three months. So it's not so bad. And it comes in just like a refillable jar that is, it's a glass jar with a metal top and you can recycle both of those things. Can you send it back to the company to have it refilled? I am not sure, but I think what I'm going to try to do is, so often with tablets, you'll be able to get refillable, um, just little compostable cardboard containers oh yeah and so I'm, I'm hoping to just go to my like local waste free shop and find a replacement there when I have to I basically bought it online only because I was also getting a razor at the same time and I was like well if I'm getting this shipped from the states I may as well like add in some other things so anyway um so the Georganics mouthwash tablets is baking soda based but it also has some sort of other essential oils and things like that to improve its breath fighting qualities I don't know um, and also <laughs> to make it taste a little better and basically it's just like it's like a little tablet um, more or less the size of a pea but it's flat and you basically just dissolve it in a small amount of water they've got instructions on the container but it's pretty easy basically what I do now is I have a glass of water that I stick the tablet jar in and I have a spoon and so every morning I'll just put the tablet a little bit of water I stir the tablet with the spoon until it dissolves and then I put the mouth guard in there. I did also try gurgling with it and it tasted fine. Um, I'm very used to like the strong punch of like the alcohol from Listerine and so... If it doesn't burn, is it even doing its job? I know, that's how I feel. Um, but, <laughs> but it was nice and minty and my mouth did feel very clean afterwards. So that's what I've sort of gone to as my general solution. But I also thought like, hey... I could just be making this because it seems like with um, if you're not going to use like an alcohol based uh, mouthwash, the baking soda is sort of the operative ingredient in a mouthwash. So um, I found a few different recipes online and I ended up making my own mouthwash with a cup of water, a teaspoon of baking soda and a few drops of essential oils, which is usually what they recommend. Um, I think it's just to improve the taste. I don't think it really has any qualities. Um, so they, they say you can pretty much use anything. I used eucalyptus because that was the essential oil that I happened to have. It tasted fine. It was kind of weird, actually. Like, you're, you're gargling with baking soda. It, it wasn't, like, unpleasant, but it also wasn't pleasant. But it, like, did the <laughs> job. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. Some of the recipes that I found online also recommended using a sweetener. So um, you, the usual one that I saw was birch syrup um, or xylitol. I, I skipped that because I thought, I don't really need this to be sweet. And also, I do not know where I'm going to find birch syrup. And I do not know what I will use for it afterwards. So I just skipped it. And I did not find that it was missing. Like, I, I didn't feel like I was missing a sweetness personally. So really, all you need to really make your own mouthwash is just like to put some baking soda in in a cup of water and you're pretty much good to go because um, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate so it's an alkaline and it can be used to kill mouth bacteria it has like antibacterial properties um, and it also balances the ph in your mouth by neutralizing the acids that are caused by mouth bacteria so it does that and it can also counteract the effect of acidic drinks so if you're drinking a lot of coffee you can counteract that by gargling some baking soda and water so it's very simple life hack. Having said that, I would like to have a pleasant minty mouth feel. So I think I'm going to stick with my tablets. <laughs> so that was mine. 
I mean, fair. The tablets are still better than Listerine. So I would say your challenge was a roaring success. Yeah, either way. although if like Listerine tomorrow was like, A, we're not going to be an evil company. And B, here's like a, a refillable version. I like the product better and I would definitely switch back. But for the like, Aww. yeah, I know. Being ethical is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will burn my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's fine. The Georganics, like, they work perfectly well, and the mint is, like, pretty pleasant. So how about you? What was your challenge? So uh, this one I thought would be easier. I don't know why. So <laughs> here's here's where I'm coming from on my challenge. Last year, I did Plastic Free July. So I kind of already challenged myself because during my Plastic Free July, I ran out of toothpaste and floss at the same time. So what I did last year was I bought some toothpaste that comes in a solid bar form on a wooden stick and it came in like a little wooden packaging and I bought it from like a little vendor that I saw in Spitalfields Market in London. So it was waste free and it was solid, which I kind of liked. I can't remember the brand, uh, which is good because I have nothing nice to say about them other than they were waste free. <laughs> Gosh, it it was super gross. It tasted awful. I had nowhere to keep it. Uh, it was hard to get my toothbrush to like pick anything up off of this thing. It got really messy. Yeah. It was awful. It was like a weird lollipop and I hated it. So <laughs> I'll be honest, it was waste free until I threw most of it away. So <laughs> that was a real shame. And then last year as well, so for the floss, it ended up being a little bit better. I bought mm. my floss from Georganics. Oh my goodness. Nice. <laughs> so we're both <laughs> shouting out Georganics. The one that I bought was using uh, Candelilla wax, uh, Candelilla, Candelilla wax. Mm. And unfortunately, it was using a polyester string, which I know isn't perfect because you still can't really compost polyester and it makes quite the energy footprint to produce. But at the time, I was mostly trying to avoid the plastic packaging and go waste free. And I couldn't really find a decent alternative that wasn't silk, which I don't know. Silkworms, I was reading about silkworms recently and it bums me out. I know they're worms, but also like the story behind yeah, silkworms. They're boiled alive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real bummer. I feel a little bit better about honey than I, I do even about, you know, like we're not boiling bees alive usually. I don't know how we're harvesting the whatever. Honey's going to be a whole episode, <laughs> I'm sure. But every episode, we're just going to mention it and never do an episode on it. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> So the nice thing about the Georganics thing was that it obviously it came in the a glass reusable dispenser mm -hmm. uh, and the packaging, like you said, came in the compostable paper box. It was the best I could do at the time. Unfortunately, I didn't buy it from their website. I stupidly bought it from Amazon. So it was still a little bit evil at the time. But what are you going to do? To Amazon's credit, they sent it without any plastic in their packaging. Yeah, so. I can also mention for the for the floss, um, I've been using a vegan waste-free floss for a little while. It is called Floss Pot Gold. And it's uh, with corn fiber and it's coated with uh, candelilla wax. They're great. It comes in a little glass jar with a little lid, and then you can use the refillable paper things. I, I was able to find it. So Whole Foods does not have the vegan version. It only has their nylon one, or, or sorry, not their nylon one. It only has their beeswax one. I was able to find at just another waste-free store in Toronto, I was able to find the gold version. So I think if you just like go through your neighborhood and go to enough stores, you'll find it. Cool. Yeah, I like that they're compostable. Yeah, the floss pot gold is made from corn, so you can compost it. Usually the vegan ones are made from nylon and you can't. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of that. And when I run out in uh, 10 years of floss from True Organics, I'm going to switch to floss pot gold. <laughs> so for my part of the challenge, I thought that it would be pretty easy to come up with an ethical alternative to my daily oral care. I was deeply mistaken, at least on the first challenge that I set myself. So <laughs> the first challenge that I tried to give myself was that I need a new toothbrush. You're supposed to change your toothbrush like every three months. I don't want to tell you when the last time I changed my toothbrush was, but it was a little bit more than three months ago. <laughs> I've been using a bamboo <laughs> toothbrush, which is fine. Yeah. But it is time to change her up. She is not clean. So I decided that <laughs> now that I'm back in Canada, I would like to pick up an electric toothbrush. My mouth is always happier with those because I'm a lazy brusher. I was using one back in London and I could have brought it with me, but well, not really because technically it was my friends. So I left it behind. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> I started with a clean head and I left <laughs> him with a clean replacement. 
no, we weren't sharing, but yes, I am a total mooch. So I did have somebody on a road trip once that accidentally used my toothbrush. And I didn't know what to do because we're in the middle of this trip. And uh, so I was like, okay, fine. And I just like rinsed it and used it again. And my other friend was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, whatever. I do that. What usually like, my friend's not sick. We share drinks, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> cooties i don't know i wasn't using my friend's toothbrush (laughs) regularly and i I wouldn't do it under ideal circumstances but (laughs) (laughs) but i did find two electric toothbrush options that seemed like they might be viable unfortunately one of them was a prototype that you cannot buy yet and i couldn't find a release date but apparently it's supposed to work when it comes out with like an old-timey sort of crank system what it's from a website called goodwell.co And I can't vouch for it because it doesn't technically exist yet. But if anyone wants to pre-order it and let me know how it goes, I mean, please, you know, (laughs) shout me out. Let me know. And then the second option that I found was from a company called Forio. And their electronic toothbrushes were $189, which as someone who is currently job hunting, it's just not feasible. So I basically failed my first challenge right out of the gate because I just couldn't justify ordering a $200 toothbrush. I will just have to be less lazy with brushing. So while I was doing this research, I also found an interesting article from uh, greenlifestylemagazine.com that I will link to that basically is an Australian website that pointed out that the energy usage of an electric toothbrush that's left on constant recharge is equal to the daily energy usage of a toaster. So that's fun. Manufacturers often recommend leaving your brush on constant recharge, but that can wear out your battery. So you're using more energy, you're replacing the battery or the whole toothbrush more frequently, depending on the design. It's not waste free at all. So, you know, frankly, if I want to be a more ethical person, I'll just keep using my bamboo toothbrushes, which are compostable, which you can pluck the nylon out of and you know, I'll just brush my teeth better. Yeah, that's that's a thing, though. The uh, the bristles. So most people will just like assume I've got this bamboo toothbrush. I'll just throw it in the compost. But most of them have nylon bristles that you can't actually compost. So you have to you do have to take the bristles out. Is nylon for compostable? I think it is. I, OK, yes, there is a kind of nylon that is compostable, but not in like your city's compost. You have to do a like you have to like put it in a special kind of composter i don't know how vancouver works but in toronto most big apartment buildings will have like an organics bin that the city just takes away and you couldn't compost nylon of any kind in that Um, there is a type of nylon that you can compost in like industrial composters but you'd have to seek that out it's the special one so in general it's just best to just take out the bristles if animal rights isn't your jam, then like you can go waste free by having a bamboo toothbrush with pig hair. That's a, an option. For me, not so much, but for other people, maybe. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that myself. Like a couple of nylon bristles, I think, are worth the life of a pig, in my opinion. Although, I agree. I don't know. Totally do the pigs, I guess probably it's just like an offshoot of the pork industries where they're getting the bristles usually. But I guess you could just shave a pig and let him go about his day. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know how I don't know how that works, but um, for for my money, it just uh, taking the nylon bristles out of the bamboo toothbrush is the best you can do. And there are a lot of companies, like most companies, that are putting out bamboo toothbrushes, especially if they're doing it in compostable or waste free packaging. Like they're they're trying to find a vegan version or a, a compostable version that's not pig hair, you know. So someday we'll have something. Eventually, hopefully, they'll get there. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up giving up on the first challenge because it turns out what I'm already doing is perfect. I just need to be a less lazy brusher, and mm-hmm. I went ahead and gave myself a second challenge that would be a little bit more exciting because this one kind of didn't really get out of the gate. So I went ahead and made a simple alternative toothpaste. I've always used Sensodyne, but I recently realized thanks to Kristen, actually, that (laughs) it's not cruelty-free. And it's definitely not waste-free. So uh, apparently it's manufactured in the USA, but there are a bunch of ingredients, so I'm not really sure if those are all made at the same factory or shipped in and mixed together. Probably that. So I I don't know enough to comment about the labor practices, as we've Mm -hmm. probably discussed in every episode, I'm sure. But basically, Sensodyne isn't perfect. So I looked up some recipes for guidance, and I ended up going with one from thethingswillmake.com and one from davidsuzuki.org. 
I figure I could trust those guys, but I ended up kind of combining them to do my own thing. So my first issue with homemade toothpaste came up right away when I realized I wouldn't be able to fluoridate my own toothpaste. Can we maybe take a second to talk about how toothpaste works so people... Yes, and then I and then I have a rant about fluoride. So, Me too! <laughs> great, perfect. One of the things that I was thinking about in terms of ethical toothpaste is like, what do you really need in toothpaste for it to work? So I, I found a few articles that sort of said the like building blocks of toothpaste. So the first thing is that toothpaste contain a, like they contain mild abrasives that basically scrub away the plaque. So it'd be like um, stuff that's granular. So it'll kind of scrape your teeth. They're oftentimes also acidic and that can break down the enamel. So the abrasives, although have they have a cleaning function, they also do some damage to your teeth. A lot of tooth pre- uh, toothpaste will also include fluoride, which strengthens and protects the tooth enamel, which is just the outside layer of the tooth. And that basically prevents you from experiencing like tooth pain and cavities. So it's really important. Um, and then in addition to those two components, which are sort of like the big components of toothpaste, some toothpaste also include detergents, um, which make the toothpaste foam. And some people really like that foamy texture. So if you have the foamy texture in your toothpaste, that is why. Something called humectants, Um, so glycerin is a good example of that, and they basically help the toothpaste to retain its moisture so it doesn't dry out. So if you have liquid toothpaste in a tube, probably it has a humectant of some kind, and glycerin is the most usual one that you'll find. Uh, Then there are oftentimes preservatives that prevent the toothpaste from growing bacteria, because you don't want that, right? (laughs) And then finally, there will be flavoring or coloring agents. So that's just so that you have a pleasant experience and your toothpaste tastes nice. But those are those are the different components that are in toothpaste. Um, it's important to also note. So you you had mentioned toothpaste bar, um, or it was like a lollipop. How exactly did that work? Yeah, I, yeah, it was a it was basically a toothpaste lollipop, and it was awful. Yeah. I don't I can't <laughs> tell you what was in it because I threw it away ages ago. But I can't recommend it at all. Yeah, but there's another um, another quite common one other than the sort of liquid toothpaste option is toothpaste tablets, which I, I suspect feel a lot like the mouthwash tablet that I use where you basically just like you put it on your tongue and as I understand it, you sort of like bite down on it to... I guess you probably don't put it on your tongue in that case. (laughs) Don't bite your tongue. But yeah, you you have to break it up with your teeth a bit and then it'll start to foam and then you can just brush it as as though it's a toothpaste. Um, So yeah, those are some of the options. And well, let's talk about fluoride then because it really protects your enamel and it's important. Do you want to, do you want to go? Yeah. So, so I, I think you have some, I think when I'm done, you're going to talk a little bit about fluoride in the alternative toothpaste you can get at like Whole Foods and places like that. Because when I was looking, um, I found that they were often proudly fluoride free, which you're going to go, I think you're going to go into detail on that. But personally, I like fluoride in my toothpaste. I went down a really big fluoride, fluoride regulatory rabbit hole. So buckle up. <laughs> well, and I went down a bit of a fluoride problem. I think we both have a lot to say about fluoride. <laughs> I mean, basically, I like fluoride in my toothpaste. Uh, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, I, I know that if you are drinking way too much fluoride, it can make you sick, but it, it has to be quite a bit before it does anything. Mm-hmm. And it, it causes thyroid problems if you've poisoned yourself with it, basically. But if you're just putting it in your mouth and spitting it out, I mean, it's, it's just going to strengthen your teeth. Basically, every study agrees. Or for that matter, ingesting a safe amount in public water if you don't live in Vancouver. Absolutely. Right. So here we go. (laughs) Basically, my first issue was that I couldn't fluoridate my own toothpaste. So I thought, okay, well, if I'm getting my fluoride from my drinking water, then that should be fine. And I just decided, you know, on a whim, let's just double check, make sure that BC, where I live, fluoridates their water, uh, just like everywhere else does. And the answer is no, no, they do not. (laughs) So this is where I went down my rabbit hole. Basically, according to MetroVancouver.org, there's trace amounts of less than 0.05 milligrams per liter. But just for comparison, I checked the Edmonton fluoride levels and they're at 0.7, which is significantly higher than 0.05. Uh, that's according to <laughs> Epcor.com, although what it actually is when you test for it, I mean, I, I don't know. But according to Epcor.com, which is 
I think where the water regulation comes in, it should be at 0.7. So basically, I have to figure out how I'm going to keep my teeth strong with this homemade toothpaste. I honestly considered going to a pharmacy, asking for fluoride drops over the counter and putting them in myself, but I didn't want to accidentally like overdose myself or something. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to mix in. I, I, yeah. Yeah. And, and fluoride is like, it's super important. The city of Calgary, Alberta, which is the biggest city in the province of Alberta in Canada, they in 2011 decided that they were not going to have fluoride in the water, which as an aside, in 1989, the city of Calgary, like the people had a referendum and decided to vote to have fluoride in it. So for the council to just on a whim decide that they were not going to follow that without holding another referendum to me is bonkers. But anyway, they took fluoride out of the water and like in that short period of time, that was, was like eight years, dentists have already seen an uptick in kids with cavities. So fuck that noise. <laughs> fluoride <laughs> is so important. <laughs> Don't add me. We're both me. hippies that are <laughs> pro-fluoride. What do you want from us? So, <laughs> And it shouldn't be this hard <laughs> to get fluoridated waste-free. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I went to um, <laughs> 123dentist.com, which is a legitimate source. I mm -hmm. double-checked. And according to them, <laughs> it sounds sketchy, but I Googled it and they're legit. So it does sound <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> but this is a legit like scientific, like dentists <laughs> are a part of this website. So I found some foods do contain... Sure. Four out of five dentists yes. agree. <laughs> <laughs> that some foods do contain trace amounts of fluoride, but I would need to consume like 30 portions of the very few foods with natural fluoride in them per day. And I just, you know, I can't. So the best thing that I sort of found for my own homemade toothpaste was to use cacao as an alternative. I found a couple of small studies that have shown that it may work as a bit of a fluoride replacement for strengthening your teeth. And also they have like a little bit of like the abrasiveness, like they're the fluoride that I, there's the cacao that I bought was um, solid. So I had to grind it up myself. So it's going to have a little bit of a texture to it as well for brushing stuff off. So I went ahead and just put cacao in this as an alternative. It's the best I could kind of come up with for homemade. Yeah. So I think there's like, there's a real problem right now in the sort of ethical toothpaste space where I personally would like three things in a toothpaste. The first thing is fluoride because I do not want to get cavities. The second thing is I would like it to be waste free. So the container just needs to be compostable. And the third is that I would like it to be animal product free. And it really doesn't seem that hard to do those three things. And you can find toothpastes that do two of those objectives at the same time. But it really seems like right now you have to choose between them, it, especially the case for like, if you're trying to do waste free, a lot of the times you just can't find toothpaste with fluoride in it. I did end up finding a toothpaste that had fluoride and was waste-free. There's a Burt's Bees toothpaste that I was able to find. But the problem is <laughs> they they have glycerin in it, and it didn't specifically say that it was non-animal glycerin, so I'm assuming it is. It also doesn't say vegan, so I'm assuming that I'm eating or, I guess, spitting out animal products, which is not ideal for me, but I'm, for the time being, it's the best there is. But there, there really, there aren't a lot of options out there if you want fluoride and you don't want waste, like plastic packaging. Like, I, you know? I don't understand. I popped into a Whole Foods when I got into Vancouver and all of this like natural, you know, quote end quote toothpaste mm -hmm. on the shelf, they were all proudly fluoride free. It was like the very front thing on all of the boxes, like non fluoride. And I'm like, how are there mm -hmm. 50 versions of the same <laughs> toothpaste? Like, the point of having choice is that they should be different, right? So I want an ethical mm -hmm. toothpaste made from mostly natural ingredients that keeps my teeth strong. But apparently I'm the only hippie in the yes. world that wants that. So so you're you're not for sure. Because I mean, me, lots of, I, I know a lot of people that are in the same situation. So is there a reason that they're not putting fluoride in their toothpaste? I have a theory on why this is the case, why there are so many fluoride free options. So two explanations, one being that like the initial sort of naturalist uh, movement has a lot of people that are in the like anti-fluoride conspiracy theory subset out there. That's obviously like part of the problem. But I think the second problem is regulation or maybe not problem, but the second reason that we there are so many fluoride free toothpaste out there, it's that you are regulated differently in making toothpaste based on whether it has fluoride or not. So 
I went down <laughs> a really big rabbit hole here. Um, I looked at the U.S. and Canadian regulations for toothpaste, and it's pretty similar, actually. So basically, in both countries, if you have fluoride in your toothpaste, it's regulated as a drug, and if you don't, then it's regulated as a cosmetic. Now, the reason that matters is that you have a lot more hoops to jump through if you're regulated as a drug. So if you're like Joe Toothpaste Maker out there and you want to produce a toothpaste that freshens breath, you can put out a toothpaste without fluoride in it and you don't need to get pre-approval. You just put it on the market and it has to basically, like it has to be vaguely safe. And like if people complain that it's unsafe, um, you might get in trouble, but you don't have to get pre-authorized approval to put the product out. Whereas if you're doing a toothpaste with fluoride in it, you have to essentially, you have to go to the regulator and they have to check that it's safe and it has to have a certain amount of fluoride in it and it has to be packaged in a certain way and have a certain amount of safety labels. All of which I think are great things and even more reason that you should go with only fluoridated toothpaste. But it also is a, a big reason that you see a lot of companies that don't have it, right? Like Lush. Big example, they have a bunch of toothpaste tablets. I would love to see a fluoridated toothpaste tablet, but none of them are fluoridated right now. And I don't specifically know this for the case of Lush, but I would imagine part of the reason is that it just takes longer. You have to go through um, like Health Canada if you're going to sell in Canada and get that authorized in advance. So I, I think that's part of the reason. And that makes me suspect that like the waste free movement's pretty new. So given that... And given that a lot of people, I think, in the waste free movement today are people with immense climate anxiety that aren't necessarily like the same group of people that would be waste free like a decade ago. And a lot of us, I suspect, want to be cavity free and don't really mind fluoride. <laughs> so <laughs> I suspect those products are coming in the next five years. It just, you know, it's going to take a little while. Well, we demand it. If any toothpaste manufacturer <laughs> is listening, I, yeah. we will buy your product if it is ethical and waste-free and fluoridated, please. <laughs> and preferably if it has the um, American Dental Association or Canadian Dental Association seals, because I always look for those. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I want to take yes. risks with my teeth. <laughs> so I made this toothpaste. I'm not fluoridated. And both of the recipes that I was looking at were also calling for something called bentonite clay, which is supposed to help with consistency and apparently has good pH levels. But I was doing this I was doing this challenge when I was in Salmon Arm, BC uh, in the month of August, and I couldn't find anywhere. I mean, I'm sure that maybe if I'd looked really hard, I could have found bentonite clay, but I couldn't. I couldn't find it while I was there. So I went ahead and left that out <laughs> as well. My options were limited. <laughs> so what I wound up doing was uh, four tablespoons of coconut oil and two tablespoons of baking soda, which was actually really weird. When I was looking at the various recipes for baking soda to coconut oil, some were calling for like a teaspoon for, against like three tablespoons of coconut oil, and some were calling for like half the amount of coconut oil, which would be like two tablespoons uh, to four tablespoons of coconut. So the, the the ratio varied wildly. And I'm not sure how much baking soda is too much baking soda in toothpaste. Mm. Uh, so I just went ahead and did the four tablespoons to two tablespoons baking soda because I don't know, it seemed easier. And then I dropped in two <laughs> teaspoons of ground cacao nibs. Uh, shout out to my dad who helped me turn the nibs into powder with a mortar and pestle and some elbow grease. I mean, I did my best. And then I was like, Dad, can you finish this for me? <laughs> and he kindly obliged. Uh, and then I added five ish drops of peppermint oil, just kind of give it a, a flavor. Um, I popped it in the fridge for 10 minutes because it was pretty liquidy, I'll be honest. And <laughs> when it came out, it was a pretty good consistency. Dad said that it smelled like an after eight, which is similar to what it tasted like, frankly. Yeah, it wasn't totally unpleasant. Um, <laughs> That's not bad. That was my yeah. first experience with it. Now I've been using it for a couple of days and I have a follow up to my notes that <laughs> I had from the day that I did it. It got kind of hot yesterday and my toothpaste melted into liquid again. I popped it in the fridge to thicken it and I left it in for too long and it turned rock, rock solid. So oh no. it's like, I, frankly, this bentonite clay is sorely missing. I'm pretty sure that would give it a way better consistency. So at first I thought, <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I would do this again um, as long as I don't have any adverse gum reactions or, you know, I get a bunch of cavities. But uh, I don't know. I made a, enough to last a thousand years. There's so much in this jar. And after I'd used it for a few days, I've noticed basically two things 
are happening that have really put me off of it. And I mean, I made this to be waste free, but honestly, I'm probably going to throw it away just like with my other toothpaste, sadly. And I'll switch to the toothpaste that you're using the I don't know what you you mentioned that birds and bees. Oh, yeah, it's birds, bees, pro enamel. It's it's pretty good. But again, it's not vegan. So <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I'm going to probably just have to... I mean, it's better than Sensodyne. I actually, so, I did find you know. a... Sorry, I, I did find a fluoridated, waste-free, and vegan toothpaste option. But unfortunately, you can only get it by buying it online in Canada because it's um, it's a German company called Dent Tabs, and they sell toothpaste tablets. So yeah, you, you can buy it only via Amazon. So that won't be waste-free. But if it eventually sells in Canada, that's great. Um, and there's another... Yeah, and also Amazon isn't a very ethical choice. Yeah, I'm trying either. not to use Amazon as much as I can. But I found another option too that you could sell by... You could buy directly. So it's an organization called Plastic Free Beach. And they offer a pretty similar product, also fluoridated, also vegan. But the problem is... So you could buy a thing of the the tablets and it was 10 pounds. So 10 like British pounds. But the shipping was going to be another 20 pounds oh. for this small thing, which... Which is fair because international shipping is really expensive, but also I am not going to pay $30, like $50 yeah. for a three-month supply of dental tablets. I'm just not. No, absolutely not. So, yeah. And as somebody who is currently – like, I just moved to Vancouver, like, a few days ago, and I am currently not in a position to be ordering products online because I'm staying at an Airbnb until I can find a place to live. It's just what I can kind of make myself or find in a – health food store, unfortunately. But my problem with my homemade toothpaste is that one, it tasted fine on the first day, but by day four, holy smokes, does it taste really bad. Like it tastes so bad. I don't know if the bentonite clay would help like level that out, but it's the, probably the cocoa going bad, isn't it? Maybe. I don't know because it was dry <laughs> as your cacao. Toothpaste like, moldy? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's not moldy, but I don't know what I've done. It, look, it tastes awful. Maybe it's the cacao. I... I, I I don't know. It tastes very bad, though. And I think it's cacao mixed with baking soda, probably. <laughs> and then <laughs> my second problem with it is that the outside of my jar is always greasy, like a lot. And I have no idea why. I'm I'm standing it up. It's not moving. I'm closing the lid really tight, although apparently maybe that's why it tastes bad, too, because like it's just a, doesn't have a good seal on it. It's in a nice jar. Like, I don't know. But basically... It's sweating and it's always super greasy from the coconut oil oh. and it's really slimy to touch. And it just, I just, I'm not happy with what I've made. So I was a huge failure on my second challenge. <laughs> it turned out okay for the first day. And now I've just made so much toothpaste that is just going to, I'll be honest, it's going to go in the bin. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to go buy something fluoridated. Oh, sad day. Yes, do it. <laughs> and then I kind of, so then there was like a, a bit of a an extra challenge that I gave myself. I wanted to, I don't currently use mouthwash and I kind of would like to, uh, especially since at first I was like, oh, I'll be using this toothpaste, you know, that doesn't have fluoride. I might as well at least use mouthwash. So I basically accidentally did a third sort of challenge in that I, when I got to Vancouver a couple of days ago, I was walking past a Winners and I saw that they had like a natural health and beauty <laughs> section and I impulsively purchased a mouthwash. It's from a brand called Jason and it's called Sea Fresh and it hmm. tastes, uh, it takes a little getting used to since I'm so used to Listerine's Minty Bite as we have discussed and I haven't actually used a mouthwash in like two years, but you know what? I kind of like it. Um, although it's definitely not waste free, which is why I should never let myself impulse shop. <laughs> And this is where I really started to realize how tricky palm oil can be as well, because I didn't see anything on the ingredients list that raised any flags until I got home and started Googling the ingredients one by one. And look, this product has the Leaping Bunny stamp of approval. Their website says that they're vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason, I think, is a fully vegan company. Yeah, and I also see, unfortunately, that they're using, you know, they have to use glycerin, as we've already talked about, and they don't say what they're using the glycerin is made out of. Like, well, they're not saying what the glycerin is, so I can kind of assume, unfortunately, most of the time when it's not animal product, it's palm oil. Or it's, it's a palm derivative. So it's not maybe palm oil, but it's a derivative from the palm tree. Uh, you can make the, the glycerin from stuff like soybeans. But unfortunately, if they don't specify, you can pretty much assume that it's palm. Yeah, it's just so cheap. So that was a bit of a rabbit hole 
that I fell down and it's a bit of a huge bummer. <laughs> Although I will say that Jason has a really cool website that does list what all of their ingredients are are that they use in their products. But like I said, I, when I looked at their glycerin, it didn't specify which source they use. So I could email them and double check to see if it's Palm, which maybe I might actually do just to, you know, if we don't hold companies accountable, they have no reason to change. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you guys are doing a really good job. Can you also be perfect? <laughs> <laughs> I know that it's hard. So like, Palm is one of those tricky things. I don't feel too bad about this impulse buy. This is a company that does seem like they're trying to use natural ingredients, uh, organic when they can. They're cruelty-free and vegan, apart from a few products that contain beeswax. And you and I have discussed that we both really appreciate when a company uh, tries to be transparent and just makes an effort yes. to be better. Do you know what I mean? So... Hey, it's future Kyla here just popping in to say that I did email Jason and they did get back to me and they told me that their glycerin is not made from palm sources. So good for them. All in all, seem pretty decent. You know, shout out there, but yeah, definitely not waste free. So not a perfect choice, but I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm happy enough with it for now. Probably I'll just make my own mouthwash next time since it's as easy as dropping a teaspoon of baking soda into a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really um, was the easiest challenge in the world. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then I also, while I was at Winners, impulsively bought a new bamboo toothbrush. I don't think that they use nylon for bristles, but frankly, I wouldn't know right now where to begin composting that anyways. I don't technically live anywhere yet, so we'll have to see what my neighborhood's recycling policy is when I get there. I also, uh, frankly, Kristen, being ethical is exhausting because even though these toothbrushes so come in compostable packaging, I saw after I got home that they're made in China because of course they are. And I just didn't think of it when I was in the shop. So now I feel bad because I bought from a big box store. The bristles are straight trash. I'm not sure what the working conditions are in the toothbrush factories in China. And the energy expenditure to get the brush to North America, I mean, did the cargo ship holding my toothbrush give a whale a headache on its way over here? How are we going to be better <laughs> <laughs> consumers? <laughs> this is a really inspiring and happy-go-lucky ending. For you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought a toothbrush and I feel bad. <laughs> no, it's so hard uh, for real. I, I guess that's the whole reason we started this podcast though, right? Yeah, it's like, how do we be better? I know you haven't watched The Good Place yet, but shout out to my favorite television show, which I actually just rewatched <laughs> for like a third time last week instead of doing anything productive. But it's a really, really good show that kind of goes into this sort of thing in a really funny way. And uh, frankly, it's the <laughs> existential crisis of our time, isn't it? Like, ah, how do we be good without yeah. living in a shack in the woods? Yeah, it's so much harder given how complicated global supply chains are you really it's impossible to get all of the information that you'd need to make good decisions and the information that's out there like there's just so much of it and it's so fragmented that it's really hard to sort through like i'm we've we talked about how i'm like lingering through a phd right now um one of the things that i've researched is eco labels so environmental labeling and i still don't know what half the eco labels mean and I literally research this stuff, so it's it's really hard and it can be really overwhelming for consumers. But I think uh, so. <laughs> one of my dearest friends is very known for her kitschy sayings, and uh, one of them is "Don't let the perfect get in the way of the good." And I really think that's like the right way to approach ethical consumption. You just have to try your best and know that we will make mistakes and as long as you're incrementally improving, it's okay. Yeah, and I guess my my guilt with the toothbrush, like there's four things that I feel bad about, but in, on the other hand, <laughs> I don't replace my toothbrush as often as I should, so less waste there. <laughs> and also... Just the fact that you can compost the bamboo handle means that there's, like, I, I was looking at some horrifying statistics. I frankly didn't write them down because they upset me too much of just how many plastic toothbrushes end up in the environment from being thrown away. And it's it's staggering. And, you know, just the fact that I'm using the bamboo handle makes such a big difference. That I do have the stat on that if you want. Oh, no, I was going <laughs> to link to it. But if we want to make people even sadder, then please, yes. <laughs> yeah. So toothbrushes account for approximately 2 billion tons of plastic waste in our oceans every year. Sad. 
Hello, future Kyla here. Kristen couldn't find the source for the 2 billion tons figure, and honestly that sounds a little high based on other figures that we've seen, but here are some stats that we are confident using. In the US alone, between 1 and 3.5 and billion toothbrushes are thrown out every year, and that would account for at least 50 million tons of waste from the US alone. And if you're not sure what a ton is equal to, an African elephant weighs between two and a half and seven tons. So there you go. Now you have a point of reference for how heavy is a ton. It's a seventh of an elephant, but 50 million of those. It's a lot. Now that you know how much a ton is, between 4.8 and 12.7 million tons of plastic waste enter our oceans annually. So that's still not great. I can't. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, I guess what's our call to action this week? Everybody go buy a bamboo <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Or you could, I don't know, you can't really, you probably can't convince Johnson & Johnson to be better. So I guess maybe support a company that's trying, you know? Find a company that seems to match your values and support them as much as you can. Yeah, we'll link to the companies that we've mentioned for sure. But if you have any others that you recommend, like if anybody knows any better products for us, please uh, share them. You can reach us at Twitter for sure, um, at Pullback Podcast or Kristen, at Kristen Pugh. And we'll put those in the show notes too. So, you know, at us. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless you're anti-fluoride, please don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> you can at me. I'll, t- I'll, I'll field that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very personally hurt. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I guess the last message, just just try try the best that you can and know that there's no way to be perfect on any of these. So, And take care of your pearly whites, people. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time. Because I wasn't recording all of that, but I bet you were. <laughs> I was. Yeah, you've got four minutes and 22 seconds of just yes. nonsense. <laughs> I mean, all of this is gold for our Patreon listeners who who are definitely subscribing and getting all of these outtakes. My mom. (laughs) And my mom.